Hello and welcome to our Senior Scam Series. I'm Katherine Honeycutt of Better Business Bureau serving Eastern North Carolina. In this video, we will talk all about guarding against identity theft. We'll cover what is identity theft, the warning signs of identity theft, and what to do if your identity is stolen. So let's start with what is identity theft. First, consider how many Americans you think have their identity stolen annually. If you guessed 9 million, you would be correct. The Federal Trade Commission, or FTC, estimates that 9 million Americans have their identity stolen annually. And of the identity theft scams reported to BBB, there was an average median loss of $260 just in 2020. This is according to BBB's risk report based on their program, Scam Tracker. And while these numbers are astounding, it's important to remember that these are just estimates based on scams that were reported. So the real impact could be much greater. Needless to say, identity theft is a major industry. Scams are designed to either steal your money or in this case, steal your identity in order to steal your money later. Scammers have all kinds of techniques to collect personally identifiable information or PII. Once they have it, they can effectively become you using your identity to open accounts, open accounts, file taxes, or obtain medical coverage. And did you know that nearly 90% of all ID fraud occurs through stolen bank statements, lost or stolen wallets, and credit cards or other offline means. So what kind of information are these scammers looking for? Identity thieves typically want the following pieces of personally identifiable information. They want your social security number, your full name, address, date of birth, and credit card and or bank account numbers. With enough information, a scammer can take over your identity and commit a wide range of crimes. Scammers can make false applications for loans and credit cards, withdraw money from your bank account, or obtain various services. They can also sell your information to others. Now, identity theft, unfortunately, may take a long time to detect. This is because scammers typically ensure that bills and statements for new accounts are not sent to your address. You may not notice what is happening until the scammer has already inflicted substantial damage to your assets, credit, and reputation. So now that we have an understanding of what identity theft is, Let's transition into identifying and reporting suspicious activity. So let me ask, do you think that you could legitimately detect identity theft? Well, here's a few steps in the right direction. First, tips to spotting this scam. Look for unexplained withdrawals, charges, and accounts. Review your bank account and credit card statements regularly. Look for unfamiliar charges, accounts, or withdrawals, and know when your bills are due. One tip off for identity theft is when you stop receiving certain bills. This can happen because a scammer, have, a scammer may have changed the address associated with your bank account or credit card. And if bills don't arrive on time, follow up with your creditors. Debt collectors may call you about debts that aren't yours, which is a major red flag. And finally, you can also set up automatic alerts on your account so you are notified every time a transaction is made. Secondly, check your credit reports regularly for unauthorized inquiries and accounts. In the U.S., you have the right to check your credit report with each of the three major credit bureaus once a year at annualcreditreport.com. Again, that's annualcreditreport.com. And you can check it once a year. 
the only these are the only free credit crediting reporting services authorized by the Federal Trade Commission or FTC. Space these checks out across the year and you will know fairly quickly if something is wrong. Next, let's dive into how you can protect yourself against identity theft. First, be careful with your personal information. Treat your personal information like the valuable commodity it is. Make sure you shred any documents that have your bank account information, social security, slash social insurance number, or other personal information. These include documents like credit card applications, insurance forms, financial statements, health forms, and billing statements from utilities or phone services. And be sure to cut up expired credit and debit cards, making sure to cut through the numbers before you dispose of them. Next, secure personal documents at home. If you have roommates, employ outside help, or have contractors in your home, make sure personal documents are in a safe place, preferably under lock and key, and not lying out in plain sight. Minimize personal information on checks. For example, you don't need to include your social security number, driver's license number, or phone number. And finally, be alert to phishing attempts. Scammers are sophisticated and their phishing attempts may come via email, text, social media message, and even phone calls. Be suspicious of any unsolicited communication asking you for personal information. Whether it's a supposed tech support call, an offer for a free cruise, or a charity plea, they may really be after your personal information. Next, let's talk about a few ways to guard against hackers. There are still additional ways to protect yourself in general from hackers, including other scams like online purchasing and timeshare scams. So the first one is use strong passwords. Avoid using your birth date, child's name, their birth date, your mother's maiden name, and the last four digits of your social security number, or really obvious passwords like 123456. Next, change your passwords frequently. I'm sure we're all guilty of just using the same password over and over again and never changing it, but that's how scammers can get into your account. And use different passwords for each online account or website. Like I said, we're all guilty of using the same password that's easy to remember, but if it's easy to figure out and they have access to one account and you have that same password for your other online accounts, it's only a matter of time before a scammer is able to access your other websites. Next, share with Care Online. Be careful about the types of information you share online, especially if it is information that could be used to get past security questions on your accounts. Things like your first car, first pet name, and where you were born. This is something that we see a lot of people do online, specifically with Facebook. There's a lot of um, games that go around that ask you to reshare and put in your answers in the blank. But unfortunately, you're sharing information that is likely a password of yours or could help them to answer those security questions. And finally, shred your outdated documents with personal information. While you should keep your tax returns forever, you should shred supporting documents for your tax return after seven years. After one year, shred bank statements, pay stubs, and medical bills, unless you have an unresolved insurance dispute and shred utility bills per month after they've been paid. Now we know what identity theft is and how to spot the warning signs to protect against it. But now I wanna talk about what to do if your identity is stolen. So what do you think? Should you take immediate action or stay silent? It can be a scary thing to have your identity stolen, and many are too ashamed to say anything, but staying silent further enables the identity thieves to continue their schemes. If you believe you're a victim of identity theft, it is very important to act quickly. 
First, you want to report it to the Federal Trade Commission, or FTC, by visiting www.identitytheft.gov. Again, that's identitytheft.gov. Once you access this website, you will be prompted to report your situation and they will follow up with a recovery plan and help you implement any next steps. You can also report scams to BBB's Scam Tracker at bbb.org slash scam tracker. Again, that's bbb.org slash scam tracker. This helps track scams and could prevent a fellow consumer from falling victim. In the future, you can also visit BBB Scam Tracker to see which scams are circulating in your area. Well, I hope that this video has been valuable in helping you learn a little bit more about identity theft. Thank you for joining me for this part of the Senior Scam Series on Identity Theft and be on the lookout for additional videos on BBB of Eastern NC's YouTube page. For additional information and resources, visit BBB.org.